What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Twigger coming at you with another tournament cast. I know a lot of you guys were looking for some more tournament cast play, and luckily my friend Chattis and his team, Mittens and Kittens, were playing in a tournament hosted by Atlas Gaming, so hopefully this will be a good game. I was lucky enough to actually be in the room this time, spectating so I can commentate the champion select for all of you, and then actually get the entire game commentated, so... Looking at the picks and bans right now, haven't been any picks, but looking at the bans, obviously some pretty good bans here, Shen, Malphite, Diane, and Olaf, very standard bans, but interesting seeing a Kha'Zix ban and a Misfortune ban. Um, Kha'Zix has, uh, he kind of fell under the radar um, for a little bit once he was uh, originally released, but uh, then since the Black Cleaver change especially, he had become very, very strong, a lot of people started playing him, a lot of big damage, a lot of escape um, abilities. Um, just overall a really strong top laner. Um, Misfortune is a band that I've not seen in, God, like since she came out. Um, I don't really think that that's a very good band. Um, kind of a really strong early game champion, but I find her late game potential um, isn't really on par with a lot of the other ADCs out there. Um, I don't think her kit really brings as much to the table as a lot of other ADCs. But... Um, Looking at the champions, that looks like both teams are picking their junglers first. Chattis um, picking his Amumu jungle. Um, obviously, Amumu has a lot of team fight potential. Very fast, clearer. Uh, really, just an overall good jungler. Um, can never complain about Amumu. Um, and it looks like the other team is actually going for Nocturne. So, Nocturne, once again, he, he kind of fell off for a little bit. No one really played him, and now he's kind of coming back into the. Uh, the main jungle scene, so to say. Um, I think these guys are probably going to be swapping around. I do know that Chattis is the jungler for uh, Mittens and Kittens, so he's not going to be swapping a Mumu anytime soon, unless this is a real meta change and a move is going to go mid or something like that, or support Mumu. And it looks like the other team is picking Caitlyn for their ADC, so. Interesting. We did see during. Uh, Actually, it's probably been a couple months now where the new new Kate started really coming out as a, an incredibly strong, almost uncounterable bottom lane. So I wonder if uh, these guys are going to want to pick new new or something like that to try to take that away from the new new Kate lane, or whether they're going to pick a strategy that they feel very comfortable with. So there we go, new new Graves. So very very strong lane, and it gets that new new away from Caitlyn. So very smart pick. You don't see Nunu Graves very often, but uh, with Graves' E, uh, his quick draw, and Nunu's blood boil on him, this guy's going to be attacking like nothing. He's just going to be cramming bullets up these guys. So, looking to see what the next couple picks are going to be. Caitlyn Janna. That would be an interesting lane. You, you don't see Janna very often anymore. She used to be, a lot of the uh, pro support players were saying that she was, hands down, the best support champion there was. And uh, now she's just kind of, you see her every now and again, but no one's really clamoring over Janna. And it looks like they're going, they are, they've locked in the Jungle Cho'Gath. And this is also a fairly new one. Um, Jungle Cho, over the past couple months, has really kind of, t his ability, his passive, just getting the percentage of life from everything that he kills, he comes out of the jungle clear so healthy. So it's, uh, it's a very, very good jungler. He has a good amount of CC. His ganking potential is great with his silence and his knockup. And then, of course, later on in the game, his late game is incredible just because of that feast, getting that huge amount of true damage. And it's literally like a second smite when you're going for Baron and for Dragon. So, And wow. So it looks like going for a Vladimir top and putting that Evelyn in the mid. Nope, swapping it out, going for the Lux. I was going to say, it's a little bit risky um, getting that Evelyn. The, the, the reason I say that, yes, he has to pick his mid now, um, because it is the last pick. But um, somebody like Evelyn, who can be quite easily countered um, for the person on the other team who is yet to pick their mid... So I like Lux a bit better than that Evelyn pick, because Lux is just a very versatile champion, very good in team fights, can farm from a distance. Even if you kill her a couple times at the beginning, she's still going to have a big amount of presence in the game. Whereas Evelyn, if you kill her a couple times, she starts falling behind. She's not going to be able to get CS. You'd have to focus on ganking a lot of the time, which takes you out of lane. So it's a, it's a lot more difficult um, if you get shut down early on Evelyn than it is when you get shut down early on Lux to... Uh, to kind of clamor your way back. 
And a Malzahar. We haven't seen Malzahar in a while either. So this is good, actually. I'm, I'm excited to cast a game like this where it's not just kind of your standard overpowered lanes. Looks like we're getting a lot of champions that I haven't seen and for quite some time. So it, it, it's going to be really good. I'm excited to cast this game. And of course, it's probably going to be... Oh, no. Oh, Morgana. Never mind. <laughs> Scratch that. Take back everything I just said. There you go. Oh, Anivia. Okay. All right. All right. That, not bad. Not bad. Kind of pick one kind of in the middle. I could deal with that. So interesting little lineups that we've got here. So Graves opting for the cleanse as well as Caitlyn going for the cleanse. So looks like nearly identical summoner spells besides uh, Vlad's ghost. And as you can see, nobody on, um, they put their, on Mittens and Kittens, they put their people in order as how they were going to pick. They, they didn't need to swap, they didn't need to do anything like that. They knew the order that they were going to be picking in, and that's the order that they picked it. So, definitely a different strategy than the other team who started swapping all over the, sorry, the, uh, actually, what am I talking about? It's only the, the first and third person who swapped, so I guess they just wanted to pick their jungler first. So, it's actually, never mind, it's Cho going to be up top. Man, I was just completely off on everything that I just said. So it's going to be Nocturne in the jungle. I even gave a little speech about Nocturne being in the jungle and how he kind of fell off. I gave that whole speech, and then I gave another speech about Cho being in the jungle. So I guess everything that I said about Cho Gav being in the jungle is technically true still about him being in the top lane. So Vladimir is going to be queuing him constantly, taking a lot of harass damage, but every single last hit that Cho Gav gets, he's going to get that health back. So... Vlad does tend to do very well against Cho'Gath, um, but once again, I find it always depends on the player. Vladimir is not the hard counter for Cho'Gath. Um, a lot of people do say that's the case, but I didn't really ever find it. Um, if the Cho'Gath plays well and he only comes in for the last hits and he gets a good amount of last hits, Vlad's Q before he hits level 9 isn't really going to be spammable, not going to really do a lot of damage, so Cho'Gath should be able to stay in lane, farm really well. It just depends on the player and whether they play smart or aggressive. The jungle ganks are going to be very important. Um, both junglers, I'm assuming, especially Amumu, is going to start on his blue. I think Nocturne will start on his blue as well. Um, so look for Amumu to probably gank um, the bot lane um, around level 3. And, uh, you know, Vlad's going to have to look out for Nocturne coming up around level 3. But Nocturne, you know, he's one of those junglers that he may actually just want to continue jungling and try to speed rush him to... Uh, to level 6. I just going to take a sip of my drink there. I, uh, I haven't casted a game in quite some time, so I forgot how much uh, talking you actually have to do. Colby Cheese did have it right where he... I always thought it was weird where halfway through he'd be like, oh, i got to take a sip of water. I'm like, come on, Colby, I need more information. But, uh, yeah, no, I know where he's coming from now. You, uh, your mouth starts to get real dry. I guess that's why a lot of these guys go uh, duo commentate with people. Um... So I guess I'll talk a little bit about what's going on with me just before this game starts. I don't think there's much more to say about uh, the team selections uh, until we get into the game. Um, I'm going to be playing a lot more League of Legends now. I had a bit of a, uh, a Minecraft thing going on. Um, I posted up those videos because I figured I might as well post something to let people know. Because uh, I pretty much vanished off the face of the earth for a little while. Um, so I'm going to be back into League of Legends. Um, school is pretty tough doing my master's degree and that, that's got a lot of... Uh, a lot of stuff going on for it, so there's a lot of work to be done. So I, I will find time to release videos and get things out. So hopefully I'll be doing a couple of videos a week um, starting this week. And uh, be looking out too, I'm going to be doing a contest, another contest. Um, hopefully by the, well it is going to be by the end of January, but I'm thinking probably this weekend I'm going to get a contest out there. So anybody watching this, there's going to be a contest next week. Um, it's once again going to be a contest where you have to be subscribed to my channel in order to participate. Um, and it will be something that I'll be asking you guys to either answer or do. So it's not going to be one of those first person to post on this video or anything like that. It's going to be, I'm going to look for something coming out of you guys because I like uh, contests where I get to see something about my viewers and uh, get to judge it based on that. So looks like we're finally now getting into this game. If my game client will load. There we go. There we go. Get cape, wear cape, fly. Hell yeah. That's how I learned to fly. I don't know how anybody else would do it. So, getting into this game. Um, waiting, 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 waiting. There we go. 
So. Oh, man, GG. Five skins. Skin to win. And a gentleman Cho'Gath. So, sorry, mittens and kittens. I don't know how you're going to get out of this one. So look at that. Slamex looks like he's, what, is that a platinum skin? Sorry, platinum uh, border? I don't know if that's platinum or diamond. So Slamex is definitely a pretty good player. Um, everybody else looks to be pretty much silver, gold. Okay, so um, so the average ELO in this is probably around 1650 um, from what I saw when I was in the game. That's the average. There are definitely outliers on both sides, but... Uh, Certainly not the highest ELO game that you're going to see um, on the realms right now, but it should definitely be a good game. The last time I commentated uh, Mittens and Kittens, it was definitely an entertaining game. Um, a lot of ups and downs with it, so hopefully they'll give us an entertaining show, and that's all I'm hoping for. I just want to be entertained right now. And uh, I'm not sure how these lane matchups are really going to go. I, I can't really comment on Graves Nunu because I, I don't think I've ever really seen it. Um... In a, in a tournament match. And same with Caitlyn Janna. Um, the Caitlyn Janna is going to be scary because of Janna's shield going on Caitlyn, getting that a, attack damage bonus, and her just being able to poke constantly. Because Graves Nunu is going to be a very up-in-your-face lane, and they're going to be very close range, whereas Caitlyn and Janna are very long range and can poke you quite hard from a distance. So it's it going to be interesting seeing that... Uh, that dynamic and the dichotomy between the two lanes. Um, Lux versus Anivia, two of Froggen's favorite champs. Going to love to see how they pair up with one another. Um, as you all know, uh, Anivia is quite weak pre-6. So look for Lux, who's a mid-game terror, um, to really kind of bully Anivia around for the first few levels, at least. Um, and Anivia is going to be blue dependent. So... It depends on what item she gets. I know that Frog intends to go for that um, early Chalice of Harmony, and then he actually goes for the uh, uh, Tier of the Goddess. So um, if if you go for those big mana items, you can actually make Anivia not so much blue dependent, but still pretty blue dependent. Um, I believe I can turn on the chat here because I want to know what the hell's going on. One sec, our top legs at the beginning. Oh. So apparently they're top lags at the beginning. So sucks to be you, bro. Get a new comp and a new network. So is he running on an iPad? <laughs> he's running on a fucking Etch-A-Sketch. That's what he's running on. Didn't know Texas Instruments made apps for calculators for League of Legends. So there we go. And we are back. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. So there's Chatty. Gonna be doing his thing on a Moomoo. Doesn't look like... Oh, there we go. Graves has now officially bought items. So you know what? Before I do this, I'm gonna just be... You know, I'll follow Chad is here. I'm going to set this whole thing up. Because I am horrible at actually doing it. Partway through the game. So I'm gonna set it up now. So that way I don't forget later on. There we go. We are all set up so everybody can see the lane matchups and uh, how everybody's doing against one another. So one thing I do love about like the new Season 3 items and masteries and stuff is that the support can nearly have full items by level 1. So I don't think a new... And oh my god, so Anivia did not see that. And there we go, so there's two skills taken by uh, Cho'Gath and by Nocturne. So n not really a bad thing because I'm pretty sure those are the skills that um, Cho'Gath and Nocturne wanted to get at level 1. Um, but still, kind of had the element of surprise. Blue team kind of caught them off guard. And Nivia actually didn't see them when she ran down here, so... Really pretty good. And one thing that could have screwed them is if uh, Amumu had decided that they, they might have been able to get a kill there and grabbed his bandage toss quickly. That has been something I've done in the past, and Amumu with bandage toss in the jungle, if you do not have a team to really, really give you a hard leash, you get so screwed in the jungle, it is unbelievable. So, just doing his standard wolves into blue. Apparently Nunu just does not really want to, doesn't want to hit anything. Probably just going to head off bottom. So, really not giving him the best leash, but uh, oh no, there comes the enemy team. So, looks like we're going to have a bit of a clash here. So there's all five, and they got the stun down onto Nunu. 
He did use the flash, did get away from that one. A little bit of damage onto the red team, but really not enough for these guys to engage on them. Looks like they're going to try to steal the blue buff away. So that's what they're doing right now. It looks like Amumu is coming back in to check on his blue buff, but that is not going to end well. Don't go in, don't go in. So they did manage to steal the blue buff, and now that has set Amumu back quite a bit. So he does take out that last wolf. There were no kills, so... Not a very eventful team fight at level 1, but uh, it's going to have quite an impact on the game. Luckily thing, Lucky thing though is that Graves is just going to be able to sit down here and start last hitting. He needs to make sure that he hits every single last hit he can, because Caitlyn's going to be coming in with a bit of a disadvantage. So, if he can get out of there with getting all of the last hits, and um, it, it, he should be able to go back earlier than Caitlyn get a little bit of an advantage going on he's also getting that solo experience as well so he's already level two so look to see a little bit of action in the bot lane um they did manage to see nocturne come down with that ward so they do know that he's heading over towards that blue buff i wouldn't be surprised to see him give that blue buff off to anivia knowing that anivia has a pretty bad early game so um wouldn't be surprised to see that one so Graves using his level 2 advantage to kind of do as much poke to Caitlyn as he can using that quick draw and that buckshot. So a little nothing really going on yet, just a, a farm fest right now. Let's see how Amumu's doing. Um, did manage to get his level 2, but as you can see, his mana is already running so low. I'm probably going to go back after this wolf. No, he's not. Nope. Nope, he's going to go up and do something. Might go and try to take the enemy rates. So... <laughs> Gentleman Choga has to be one of my favorite skins. It <laughs> just is quiet and up you go and just nom nom nom, just fantastic. So it looks like they're actually going to try to counter jungle Nocturne's red. Ballsy, ballsy, ballsy. So there they go. They did manage to steal it. Way to go. Nice freaking play right there. So they think that they're still actually doing it. But nope, there you go. Just realized... You got it stolen, Nocturne. What up? So, Amumu was set back by losing his blue, but you know what? He got the experience back by taking that red. It doesn't mean his jungle is going to be any easier because his mana is still going to be going quite low. But getting that red buff stolen from Nocturne, make sure that he's on par. He is level 3 now as well as Nocturne. So, um, I think Amumu is actually going to be just fine. He's probably going to go back after this. going to have a decent amount of money. Hopefully get him something to help him with that mana. Um, as we can see, Vladimir has actually already gone back. Uh, went down just to pick up an Amplifying Tome, five pots, and that ward. Just wants to make sure that he is safe from those Nocturne ganks. Probably expecting to be taking a little bit of harass from that Cho'Gath, and uh, Vladimir is probably going to be a little bit pushed up. So, since he's pushed up right now, probably not a bad time to go back, just to guarantee that you don't uh, get ganked and killed nice and early, lose that first blood. So there you go, Amumu's going back now. Uh, he did actually manage to take out his golems as well and just going to be wasting Nocturne's time. So very, very good. He's level 4 now, Nocturne's level 3, and Nocturne's not even going to find that uh, uh, those golems. So not bad at all. Nocturne is just wasting his time. I can't believe he's still just running around, having a time. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah, no, you're not going to find anything, pal. Just keep running. Keep running. Looks like he's going to go for these rates. He's got to be careful, though. So you can see it. Lux can see this. But it doesn't look like they're going to react at all. So you do have to kind of pay attention to those things. I don't blame her for not seeing um, the blue out there. Um, but if he did look down a little bit, you could definitely see that Nocturne was there. But just wasn't looking there at the right time. So no problems at all. He just took the race. That's... Uh, Really not that bad of a trade at all. He did waste a lot of time in the jungle and is actually still wasting a lot of time. He's going to try to gank bottom lane here. But uh, you're trying to gank a lane that's pushing and against a Graves Nunu. It's going to be very, very tough to gank this lane. So um, Nocturne's just going to continue running around. So Vladimir Cho'Gath. So as you can see, Cho'Gath is nearly out of mana. So not really a whole lot that uh, Cho'Gath can do. He's going to try to last hit, get a little bit more mana back. But you see, he's missing those last hits, which means that the harassment coming from Vladimir is starting to really wear down on Cho. So, so not overly good. Take a quick look at the CS. Lux 43 and Nivea 45, so very, very even. 48 for Graves to 40 for Caitlyn, so a slight advantage for Graves on that blue team. But 29 to 41 for Cho'Gath, so top lane... 
So a little bit, a uh, little bit behind for Vladimir, but Vladimir did end up going back, and uh, Cho'Gath started with the crystalline flask while Vladimir started with the boots. So um, could see a slight advantage for the Vlad right now, but uh, can certainly close the gap if Cho'Gath continues to last hit the way that he's going. Amumu slightly ahead of the Nocturne, but Janna, wow, 200% more than Nunu. So Nunu really does have to pick up his socks if he's going to want to stay in this game with that Janna. So going to have to look for that. Yes, he had nothing else to say about the sports. They have done nothing. Um, one thing to say about the sports, I guess, would be that Janna did start with the Crystalline Flask while Nunu has already started with uh, the building blocks for Philosopher's Stone. Um, I like Nunu's build better, I have to say. Um, I don't find Janna loses a whole ton of mana um, using her abilities, but um, I can't really say anything because this guy is a, a either a diamond or a platinum player uh, for the border that I saw. So I think he knows a tad bit more about the game than I do. Just a tad. Oh, big fight going down with Nocturne here. He's going to try to flash over this wall. Are they going to have enough? Uh, they're not going to follow him. Oh, with the Lux laser! Beautiful! What a laser! Great, great fight. So, picking Nocturne off for that first blood with that nice laser. And uh, he even wasted the flash. So, that was. You could not have had something better than that. Um, not only did you get the kill, but now Nocturne is going to be coming back with no flash. Um, and, and that's really going to hinder Nocturne's ganking potential. Because he has to get in close range for those spheres. Um, he doesn't even have his ultimate, he's only level 4. So, Nocturne has fallen a bit behind, while now Chattis has just hit level 6, so this is where Amumu starts to get terrifying. He now has that ultimate, the Curse of the Sad Mummy. Um, he's gotten to the point now that he's got his uh, Spirit Stone, that blue buff is not overly necessary. He can now do his jungle without blue buff and not be uh, behind what Nocturne's going to be doing, so... Uh, Amumu's play with that red buff steal and making sure that he was clearing his jungle quickly It's gotten him to the point where he is now not behind Nocturne. He's actually ahead. So The blue invade was great by the enemy team, but they didn't really follow up by completely shutting Amumu down That's what you need to do if you're gonna do an invade like that on an Amumu You need to shut him out of the game. Make sure that he is not gonna be coming back You need to hit level six first as Nocturne Get those ganks in so that way you guys have a lead by the time that Amumu hits level 6 and starts ganking your team. So, I don't like how they didn't really follow up on that one, but we'll see how the game plays out. I feel the AoE on blue team is outstanding. Every single member of blue team has an AoE ultimate. So, it's going to be very, very scary. It, th there's something to be said about AoE teams. They don't always work. I've seen a lot of them fail. Because if you miss them, then you, if you miss your AOE ultimates, then you're screwed. Or if you have to burn them all on one person or two people, like it's it's a very finicky kind of build. Sorry, strategy. But um, I've seen it work when you catch all five of them and all five of the ultimates, and good luck surviving that. Um, looks like blue team is going for the early dragon. Well, it's ten minutes in. I guess it's not really early. And if he's very scared, putting that wall in. But uh, not good. Nunu is low. They did manage to knock up that Lux. She did get her flash off. Nocturne's Fear Tether did not get off. And it looks like they're going to be able to just run away from this. Janna making sure she gets the ward and tries to get the site. But they are able to just escape that. So completely clean dragon take from the blue team. Mittens and kittens. Just doing it like clockwork. So very well done. So we're going to be seeing the dragon come up in, uh, I believe it's six minutes. Yeah. Man, it's been that long since I played. I actually forgot the Dragon Timer. Come on, Twigger, get back in the game. So, I did play a few ranked games again, and I did win them. So, I, I, I don't think I've lost what I had. So, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll see how uh, the few videos that I that I post up, we'll see how we do. So, um, And if you're starting to take these rates, um, does have her blue buff, so she is able to keep that ultimate on for much longer than if she did not have that. I'm um, taking another look at this CS. Uh, Vladimir is still falling behind 85 to 66, but Vlad does have that one assist, so already has a giant spell. He's going to be very hard to kill, but it looks like Cho'Gath is going for that early Rod of Ages, so that is quite scary. He's going to be very, very hard to deal with in the late game. When Cho'Gath gets his full feast stacks, he's going to have that Rod of Ages and get a couple more tanky items. It is so hard to take Cho'Gath out, and he's going to be doing a lot of damage. So you can't really just leave him alone and let him kind of chomp your entire team. But you can't focus him because he's just too damn tanky. So 
going to be interesting to see how Mittens and Kittens deals with this. But look at that, Graves already has his Bloodthirster, so he is a bit uh, ahead of Caitlyn in that regard. So a bit of damage going down onto Graves. He's quite squishy, actually, still under a thousand health. But uh, with that sustain from the Bloodthirster, he should be doing fine in lane. <coughs> So that ward is really helping Jan out. She's just harassing. Um, she's probably got that. Uh, so they damn they do actually see a Mumu in here. Um, hopefully Mumu does realize that they are playing very very passively. So good. A Mumu is gone now. So big Nocturne ultimate onto Lux in the mid lane, but the fear does not bring her the right way. A lot of damage going down onto the Nocturne, and oh my God, what a kill! So barely surviving. Lux, please do not go back in. You survived. Please do not go back in. <laughs> so the fear tether, that's one of the things about uh, fear in this game is that sometimes it can work flawlessly and bring them right back into you and that's how you get those kills. But in that case, the fear just actually worked in Lux's advantage is that it just walked her straight into her own turret. And Nocturne just took too much damage and another beautiful laser coming out of Lux and managing to kill Nocturne again. So... Nocturne not really having the best game. And look at that. Now Lux gets the red buff. So, <laughs> if Lux wasn't scary enough already, you've now given her red buff. So now every single auto attack that she's going to get off. And Lux is notorious for getting her auto attacks off because of her uh, her passive. So, <laughs> I'd be, uh, be kind of scared for the amount of damage the auto attack is going to be doing to Anivia. So, a movement giving off this blue buff to Lux. So, she's going to be terrifying. Double buff Lux in the mid. Brand is, uh, sorry, uh, Graves is now going back, picking up his tier 2 boots. I had to take another drink. Taking another lesson from Colby Cheese and making sure that I can keep on talking. Keep on trucking, as they say. So, uh, they actually did ping that ward right there, so they do know that Tribrush is warded. That's actually a pretty vital piece of information. Um, they're trying to do as much damage to this bottom turret as they can. Uh, I think they really want to rush this turret down and start roaming, kind of. They realize that they're not doing overly well in the laning phase, so I think they just want to end the laning phase. But, um, I think the team potential, sorry, the team fight potential of blue team is far superior to red team. So, gonna have to see how that plays out, but dear god, Shogath already has 6 stacks, 2.6k HP. Oh, man. I don't know how you deal with that. He's already level 11. So Chogath is scary. But has not landed a hit on the turret yet. So Vladimir's been doing a very good job of clearing the waves. Making sure that Chogath is only farming. So at least top lane isn't pushing not giving his team gold. And uh, Vladimir went for an early Rylize. So interesting build seeing, not seeing him go for that... Uh, the early uh, Hextech Revolver. So Mumu going for the Boots of Mobility. Once again, a very interesting build. So just going for those very, very quick movements. Go for those ganks. Make sure they can get right up in their face. Land that Bandage Toss and land that Curse of the Sad Money. Mummy. <laughs> curse of the Sad Money. When is money sad, guys? When you are a student and you don't have any in your bank account. That is the Curse of the Sad Money. But Curse of the Sad Mummy. AoE stun. That is what we wanted to talk about. Making sure that he can get in range of that ultimate um, and not being overly dependent on his flash. What you see a lot of the time with Amumus, um, they flash in, then cast that ultimate, which is perfect, works incredibly well. But with those boots of mobility, you actually might not need to use that flash. You can actually run in, as long as they don't hit you, run in and get that ultimate off without burning your flash. So you can use it for kind of a more precarious situation. So going to be interesting to see how that uh, pays off. So there is a ward right there, but they do know Blue Team d is aware that that ward just got placed, and they have been spotting Nocturne this entire time. So Nocturne level 7, actually, the lowest level in the game. So he has died a couple times and was wandering around the jungle with no successful ganks yet, so... Um, Cho'Gath coming down into the mid lane. I think they're preparing for this dragon, which is now up. So they do want to make sure that they at least contest this one, because the last time they lost dragon with zero contention... Uh, doesn't look like Vladimir's even coming down. He's just going to try to take down this top turret, which I do like this. Um, this trade I've never thought is uh, overly bad. You might lose the dragon, but you pretty much even out the uh, the gold. 
You even out the gold by taking the top turret out, and it looks like they actually took a lot of damage on that mid lane turret as well. But there's the flash by Cho'Gath, incredibly aggressive, doing a lot of damage onto the Graves, picking him off, but he does manage to flash away. They don't block the Caitlyn ultimate though, but Nocturne does end up going down again, but Nocturne is not worth a lot of money right now. And look at that damage going down on Amumu, but luckily Amumu does escape. Vladimir did manage to take out that top turret, so really overall, not a horrible trade. Um, they did end up losing that grave, so that is a little bit more money. It did go on to Caitlyn, which is not where you want that going down on. But look at that, they managed to catch Anivia underneath the turret, but they're not even going to manage to break her egg, so... That does kind of suck. She does still have her egg up, right? Yeah, she does. But uh, I still think that was a, a trade in favor of Blue Team. They did manage to take down that top turret, and they did a lot of damage to this middle turret, so... They should be able to take this out pretty soon. And the thing that I like about the dragon for uh, turret trade is that the dragon doesn't advance you to the end of the game while the turret is never going to come back and you are pushing that lane up. So I always do like trading the turret for the dragon. I don't mind that trade at all for people who do that. But I do also understand the importance of getting those early dragons to uh, set your team up nicely. But we're already looking at a 3k gold lead for blue team. So they, they are still in quite a good position. Um, even though they did manage to lose that dragon. Um, once again, looking at the farm, you know what, Vladimir has been able to keep up. Cho hasn't really expanded his lead. He's always been about 20 ahead of Vladimir, so um, good on Vlad for uh, kind of uh, keeping himself. He is still at a disadvantage, but uh, keeping himself at that disadvantage rather than falling further and further behind to that Cho'Gath. Um, Amumu managed to get that kill, which means he got his Spirit of the Ancient Golem. Um, he's going to be... Getting, he needs to now start building his uh, big tank. He had him like, um, why am I forgetting the, the shield? Aegis of the Legion, that that would be it. Um, I'd like to see that on him. Um, or going for the Philostone, maybe doing a uh, Shirelia's Reverie or something like that. But once again, I don't know as much as these guys. These guys are going to build what they're going to build. And um, it looks like Graves has actually started to really set himself apart from Caitlyn. 161 to 132. Uh, Caitlyn does have that kill, so it doesn't seem as though the money is going to be that big of a difference. Um, actually, it is 700 gold, so wow, that uh, the kill did not do as much as I thought it was going to. So Graves having about 700 more than Caitlyn, that uh, is quite a big difference. Uh, Cho'Gath once again up top, just farming away, doing what Cho does best. Ultimate used by Lux. They're going to try to do a bit of damage to this Nocturne. Nocturne does have to, have to burn his Flash, but Vladimir also had to burn his Ghost. Uh, they do manage to grab a Nivea. Nivea does still have her Egg, though, so they're going to have to kill her twice. A movement taking a lot of damage under the turret, but they are going to manage to take down this Nivea. Very well done. Very glad to see that Nunu did not break his ultimate um, and take that kill. So uh, that would have really sucked. So it looks like... Red team did manage to take out the turret, and Cho'Gath took out the turret as well. It looks like blue team is just going to push on through and take down this second tier mid lane turret, which is, I think, much more valuable than two, uh, two first tier tur turrets. First tier turrets. There we go. We said that appropriately. Up in the top lane and in the bottom lane, so I think it's a great, great trade. Um, but I had leg. Oh, yeah. Okay. Deal with it. <laughs> Never take that as an excuse. If you have lag, then get a different internet provider. Or stop downloading the porn that you're obviously downloading, so. Or tell your roommate to stop downloading the porn that he's obviously downloading. So it looks like the uh, the mid lane turret is probably going to go down uh, for blue team. There's no one really up here defending it besides Nunu. Um, so it's going to bring the gold into, well, still a pretty much a three over 3k gold lead so really kind of evened it out but they do now have this mid lane avenue so this is going to be uh kind of precarious for red team they're going to really need to defend that uh that mid lane because if they take down a couple people they're just one turret away from getting an inhibitor down and getting that inhibitor down is crucial so they are seeing Jogath down here he's just walking around like a sir look at him damn he's tanky 31k, 87 armor, 136 magic resist, and Lux just, Lux just stopping him from going B. Just, uh, <laughs> he's going to be that guy. Yep, he is going to be that guy. So looking at the items a little bit, Lux opting for that Abyssal Scepter, going for that Haunting Guys. So I, I'm kind of curious to see that he hasn't upgraded that uh, Chalice of Harmony into the Athene's Unholy Grail yet. But I guess it's all personal choice if he, if he hasn't... Uh, 
kind of been starred with mana. He's getting a lot of blue buffs, so maybe he hasn't seen the need for it yet. I always like that item, but seeing the Abyssal Scepter and the Haunting Guys, he is doing a lot of uh, magic pen. Oh, but Chad is getting caught out here. A lot of damage going down. The Feast comes down onto Amuma, and it does manage to take him out, so that really, really sucks. Uh, did lose that red buff over to Cho'Gath. So I thought he was going to survive, but I think the Ignite actually took him out. Who put the Ignite? Yes, it was Cho'Gath, so... That Ignite just taken out for enough. The Feast actually wasn't enough to kill him, so I thought he was actually going to be able to escape from that. But uh, Cho'Gath is not the one that you want uh, kills on. So that might not be overly good. So Nunu just going to take down this ward and run! Running, running, running! Yeah, he's going to get out of there, no problem. So actually they repinked the pink. That sucks. Damn you, Janna! So, but Janna already has her Philosopher's Stone, already has the, uh, what is this it's called? Yeah, Ruby Sights. I knew it was Ruby something, but I could not remember Sight Stone for the life of me, so. Both Nunu and uh, Janna pretty much with the same items nearly, except for the uh, Glacial Shroud on Nunu, but they're going to have a lot of wards coming out uh, with no problems at all. I like the new ward item. Really make sure that there's constant map coverage. Really becomes a, the supports now have... I find a more crucial role of just having constant vision out. It's almost like a new ability with supports, getting that uh, that sight stone, making sure that they have vision constantly. It's not making them break the bank. Uh, they can use their money elsewhere to buy actual items. So it's uh, I really, really like that item because I do love playing support, but uh, I found before it was just I always had to have that six slot empty for wards, even in the late game. So it's nice to actually have an item there. Oh, great bandage sauce onto Kaelin. The cleanse already came out. Big burst damage onto Janna. The damage is getting done onto Cho'Gath. Are they going to manage to take him out? They did take him out. And exactly who you want the kills on, Lux and Graves. They're actually still going. Great light binding. Oh my god. Perfect, perfect snare from the Lux. And if he does manage to um, stop them in their tracks. But wow, see, and this is exactly what I was talking about. They're going to take down this inhibitor during this push. Anivia is not going to have enough with Nocturne to take them out. Nocturne wasn't even in range to do his ultimate to actually get in there and try to change the, the flow of this fight. Um, great snare once again from this Lux, managing to egg Anivia, doing as much damage as they can. Hopefully they can take her out, and they do nice. Very, very nice. These Lux bindings have just been superb. So, Brand Burst. Great, great Lux play on this one. I'm so glad that you swapped from Evelyn. This has been uh, showing your skill with them skill shots. So uh, blue team is probably just going to rush back home. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see red team just go for a quick dragon here. I really wouldn't think they would go for Baron, but they know that blue team is low. They're probably just going to snag this dragon and then uh, go home. So, it wouldn't really be the worst loss for blue team. The last thing that you want is for blue team when they're low to go for a dragon. Try to just pick it off before they go back and manage to get caught by an entire uh, full health enemy team. So I think they made the smart decision there. Don't push their luck. They took down the inhibitor. Now all their lanes are going to be pushing. Um, they have a 5k gold lead now. So they're just going to go back, use that gold advantage, make sure that they're ready for the next fight and go from there so just great pickoffs there it was just a really really good team fight great amumu initiate and ultimate onto that caitlin and they just managed to burst that janna down like it was nothing hear that janna you're nothing i can't say that i'm supposed to be a commentator i'm supposed to be uh unbiased during this entire thing but fuck you red team nah nah i'm cool so looking at the items Interesting to see uh, Riggle's Lantern. I, I like never see that anymore. <laughs> it seems to be just kind of an old item now. Um, but I find it still just has its uses. It, I find it still to be quite strong, but people just don't seem to want to use it anymore. So Lux getting that uh, that blue buff. Cho'Gath now sitting with his Abyssal Scepter and his Rod of Ages. So, God, he's going to be doing a lot of damage and he's going to be very tanky. But the lucky thing about killing him before is that he now doesn't have full Feast Stacks. So he's only sitting at four Feast Stacks now. Um, it's not going to be long until he's up to all six again. Um, but now we're getting into the point of the game where he's going to be kind of a little bit hesitant of using that feast on creeps to get his stacks up because he really wants to use those uh, those feasts on champions in team fights because it just does so much true damage, especially on somebody squishy like Graves. So like, uh, how much is his feast doing? His feast is doing yeah, uh, 
Good god. Yeah, it's almost 600 damage. 600 true damage. And looking at Graves' health, he's only at, what, 15... Yeah, 1,500? So you gotta think, that's gonna take down nearly half of his HP. Just under half of his... Sorry, yeah, just under half of his HP. Just that one ability. So, um, kind of pertinent that you have that in team fights. But once again, you also want Shogat to be as tanky as he possibly can, so uh, he kind of wants to use those feasts also on the minions to get up to six stacks, but big, big minion wave coming into this turret. They're going to try to do as much damage to it as possible, but the best part about Anivia is that you can just take those minions out like nothing. So Amumu really getting caught here, but here's the AoE team coming out. They did manage to get the Curse of the Sad Mummy out, and here comes the Nunu ultimate doing quite a bit of damage onto that Janna. They managed to take out the Janna with the Graves ultimate. A lot of damage going down onto the Cho'Gath. Lux manages to take out Cho'Gath, but good god, they're taking so much damage from the turret. They're trying not to die just from the turret alone. The Ignite is down onto the... Oh, and it's not going to be enough. So, that was really unfortunate. That was an engage that Blue Team did not want, but they kind of got forced into it from that. It was actually a great Anivia wall right here by the turret that caught Amumu completely out. He was going to be taking way too much damage. Um... Luckily, a lot of damage is being done to this top turret. Um, the minions actually might be able to take this one out. They actually are going to take it out. Way to go, minions. Minions, OP. So it was unfortunate that uh, Amumu kind of got caught and they had to engage there. Um, it wasn't the worst fight. They did manage to at least take down a few of the enemy team. And they did get that top lane turret out of that engage. So really not horrible. But uh, they still did lose that fight. Um, but as you can see, that's when the... Uh, the AoE team really comes in handy is that they just did so much damage so quickly. I'm going to be trying to catch Janna out there, but uh, Janna's just going to ward over to make sure that they have sight of the Baron. But Anivia's blue buff is gone. They did manage to steal that before that uh, team fight. And now Choga has to regain his stacks again, so he's at three stacks right now, and you can see still very, very tanky, but would be far more tanky with those stacks up on him, so. He's going to be very hard to deal with late game when he gets all six stacks. Oh, yes! And you stole that small ray. Thank God. OP. Now you are just... You're flying. You have so much money now from that small ray. So, Anivia is back, but blue team does not know that, so they do not want to gauge on this. All they see is the enemy team, so they don't want to be in on that. Uh, looks like the red inhibitor is going to be coming back. And Nivy's actually going to pop up to top lane just to make sure that she clears this. Because if they start pushing up to this turret, they could have another exposed inhibitor. And that is the last thing that you want. So the blue team now does know that Nivia is back in base. And it looks like they're actually starting Baron. So this is... This is ballsy. This is really ballsy. I wonder if they're going to get the engage here. All the ultimates are back up. Graves is taking a lot of damage from Baron, though, so I don't think Blue Team wants to fight this. Graves is nearly at half HP. They do manage to take out that ward, so they're really making Janna use her wards. But, uh, yeah, they're just going to go back. And so, Red Team's just sticking around because they think that they're just going to continue to try Baron. So this is just free money for, the, uh, for Blue Team right now. And Nocturne is back in the base, defending against these uh, minions who are probably going to take down this inhibitor. Because Nocturne has to come to try to defend this Baron. So a lot of damage being dealt, but Nocturne can just ultimate right into this Baron fight. But now there's a lot of damage being done onto this inhibitor. Are the minions going to be enough to take down the inhibitor? Come on, minions. Come on, minions. 900. 700, 600, 500, 400. Come on. Come on. Super minion. No attack. The inhibitor. 200. Oh dear god, it actually, it's going to be enough! It's going to be enough, so the inhibitor is down from the minions. These blue team minions are OP as hell, making sure that they take down that inhibitor. Just going balls deep on that inhib, so this uh, little Baron stall that uh, the blue team had going on here actually really paid dividends. They just stayed there for as long as they could, made sure that those minions did the damage that they needed to do. And now they have an inhibitor down, so they're going to have map presence once again. They're going to have map control, and the lanes are going to be pushing. So, very, very smart play, kind of keeping that uh, contested Baron going for as long as they could. I like it. And now that we just have people going back, we will watch Graves Farm as I take another sip of my drink. Oh, we are feeling good now. So, so quite a low kill game. Um, only 10 to 7 people have been playing... Uh, quite cautiously and quite well, there really was not a whole lot of ganks that happened. 
Um, I think the only real gank uh, that ended up in a kill was the Nocturne gank onto Lux. And it wasn't even Nocturne killing Lux, it was Lux killing Nocturne, so... So look at this, the, it, as well as I say that blue team is doing, it's actually now only a 2k gold lead. Uh, well, sorry, just under a 3k gold lead. So red team has managed to kind of close this gap a little bit. Um, just looking at the farm, uh, once again, so Chogath is now a little bit further ahead than he was previously, 228 to 197. Um, and Nivea is quite far ahead. This is probably where the gold differentiation is coming from. The differentiation, the gold difference is really coming from. 249 to 201, and also the 155 to 104. So nearly 100 gold difference between, uh, sorry, 100 uh, creep difference uh, between Nocturne and Nivea and Amumu Lux. But uh, the kills are in their favor. So looking at the gold, 10,473 to 10,184. So really not that big of a difference. Uh, between the two mids, and uh, really not a big difference between, well, actually, there is quite a big difference. 400 gold between Nocturne and Namumu. So, you know, it, it just goes to show you that, yes, kills are great to have, but uh, that CS really, really adds up. So you never want to be sacrificing your CS. So we're having a bit of a standoff. Cho'Gath standing right up in the front. Still doesn't have full feast stacks, and his fe feast is currently on cooldown. But it will be up for this next fight. So they're looking to try to see if Anivia's blue buff is up, but I believe that Anivia just got that. Well, didn't just get it, but uh, did recently acquire it. Um, looks like they're just going to be tanking this turret, taking it down. Vladimir is very, very tanky. Um, has that realized, but look at that, Amumu going in. Did actually get caught out, so really not very good. He uh, took a lot of damage, but a lot of damage coming out with that Vladimir ultimate and the Lux ultimate going down on them. Janet being taken down very, very low. Also has that Oracle, so really doesn't want to lose that. But look at that. Nocturne does go down from the Vladimir. Gray is just trying to run his ass out of here now. So two for one, really not horrible. Um, but you really don't want to give these guys any kills. So good amount of damage coming down onto this Caitlyn. And Graves is still very, very healthy. Every All three members. Well, Vladimir is a little bit lower, but he does have that health regen. And oh, great catch. Manages to egg Anivia. The Ignite going down onto Anivia, going to manage to take her down, so very, very well played. Caitlyn does still have that GA up, but good god, that Lux binding. Managing to seal the fate onto that Anivia, so actually manages to tie that fight up two for two. So really, actually, not bad at all. I'm very glad to see that that, uh, that worked out for Blue Team. But Cho'Gath still just so, so tanky. And I don't really know how Amumu got kind of caught out there, but he was definitely separated from his team and had to burn his ultimate very early in that fight. Um, looks like they're now pinging on Baron. I guess I want to uh, get near that, kind of see what's going on. Uh, maybe start contesting it again. I guess they're getting to the point where the inhibitor is going to be up pretty soon um, and want, them, want their attention focused elsewhere. So this Janna, having her oracles. So a lot of words being placed down. This Baron Pit is going to be lit up like a Christmas tree. Or me after lunch. What up? That was a, that was a me being drunk joke after lunch. <laughs> Anyways, back to the game. So this pink ward in front of Baron has been serving them so, so well. They have taken out a lot of wards from this pink ward. Um, and they're just taking out more. Uh, Nunu has his oracles as well. Uh, his is actually about to run out, but I think Jan's is actually, yeah, his, hers is about to run out as well. So, actually, no, his isn't about to run out. Sorry, I read that the wrong way. His actually is brand new, so they're going to have an oracles for longer than the enemy team, so that uh, actually could be quite in their advantage. Especially if it comes down to a kind of a confrontation in front of Baron. The red team, sorry, the blue team is going to have the ability to clear those wards without pink wards. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out. So Vladimir going back once again. I don't know what he's going to uh, finish here. He's probably going to finish his Will of the Ancients, I would assume. I, nope, he went and finished his Rabadon's Death Cap. So big AP boost for that Vladimir now sitting at 494 AP. Going to be doing a lot of damage, and I like the synergy that these guys have had. They all seem to wait until Vladimir uses his ultimate, so that way they get that big DPS boost, that percentage boost from Vladimir's ultimate. So, 
Very, very important to see that happen in an AoE comp. So many times you see um, people just blowing their ultimate, and then Vladimir blows his ultimate, but you get that, what is it, like 12% or something like that? 12% increase. So, huge amount of damage that you get um, just by having that Vladimir's ultimate on the enemy team. So Anivia did just go back, and blue team actually did see this. So they're going to want to engage on this. There's the bandage toss onto Janna. Great bandage toss. Is he going to use his curse of the sad mummy? No, he is not. So Janna didn't have to waste anything for that one. Um, really sad that he didn't see uh, a bigger fight out of that one. But you can't win them all. Cho'Gath coming in, going to use the uh, the rupture on that bush. Is going to see them. Coming in, trying to do as much damage as they can. It looks like a fight is going to be happening here. Snowball going down onto Janna. Manages to get that bandage toss onto Janna and Caitlyn. Great amount of damage going down onto Janna. Bursts her right away. Anivia does not have her egg up anymore, so Anivia is a very vulnerable target here. Graves just running away from Cho'Gath and from Nocturne while Caitlyn gets picked off by Vladimir and the rest of the uh, the blue team. But now Cho'Gath is in a precarious situation, taking a lot of damage. And Nunu ultimately goes off to slow him down. Manages to take him down. Oh, and the kill did go to Nunu, so... Still not the worst thing to have happen, and the inhibitor, perfect timing, is now up. So they're just going to take down this inhibitor again, and they're just going to keep the map control. There is quite a big creep wave coming into this bottom lane turret, so wouldn't be surprised to see blue team kind of transition into this bottom lane, take down this bottom lane turret, because they still have about 30 seconds before Caitlyn is up, um, who's the, the real scary target right now that they do not want to face. And looks like they're just going to push right through into this uh, turret. See, Graves with that blood boil just doing so much damage. So there goes the second inhibitor for blue team. So they're just, they're playing this game very surgically, taking down small advantages as they can. They are going to go back right now, make sure that they heal up. Jan is actually going to try to chase them away. They want to go back and heal as quickly as they possibly can, just so that way... Oh no, they're actually going to go for Dragon. So... In this situation, because there are no wards by red team, this is actually not a bad idea. But um, in any other circumstance, I normally wouldn't recommend this from what I said previously, is that now you have a low health team, and there is an entirely healthy team coming down. They could have probably gone for Baron and tried to uh, secure that one before blue team even got back to them. But uh, luckily the red team didn't do that, and luckily they didn't have any wards, so they didn't see blue team doing that, so uh, I will not fault them for that. That was a good play that just snagged them some more money. So now we're really seeing the big items come out for uh, for these teams, so that's really going to dictate how the rest of this game goes. Um, got the runic bulwark onto Amumu, he's going to be quite tanky, let's just see actually how tanky he is. Um, 3275 health, 185 armor, 121 magic resist. Let's compare that to the enemy tank. Of course, his health is going to be higher. 44, 35, 130, 143 armor, and 141 magic resist. Um, and he even went for a Warmog's armor, so dear god. Cho'Gath is going to have more health than, uh... I was going to say higher than I can count, but then I know that I'm going to get a comment saying, Well, didn't you say you were doing your masters? Can't you count that high? Shut up, it's an expression. He's going to have more health than I could possibly count. So, Chogath is going to be very, very scary to deal with, but Amumu's now at the point where he can certainly take a lot of damage and engage on those team fights. Nocturne is down here defending against these super minions, and now that leaves only a 4v5 down at this Baron, and they do not have a smite. So they're going to try to take down this turret. They do have the ability to have a smite there, and they do manage to take down Baron now. Cho'Gath has put himself in a bad position in, entire, in front of this entire team. They do still have a lot of their ultimates up, but they're going to want to get out of here because Nocturne is making his way down. They are going to take out this Cho'Gath with the Ignite. Nunu manages to get that kill again, so way to go, Nunu. You just have Cho'Gath's number on this one, apparently. And perfect. So they managed to take down Cho'Gath, who is the person you want to take out. Look at his corpse. He was smout upon the fields of justice. So, Cho'Gath being taken out means that he's going to have to rebuild those feast stacks once again. So, it's very unfortunate when Cho'Gath dies, because building those feast stacks takes quite a while, and it also risks you not having your feast during the team fight, which is so, so crucial to have. So, um, it really puts him in a bad position. It puts his team in a bad position, because you're losing such a crucial ability, um, which he's going to need to use to... Uh, bring his feast stacks back up so he can be as tanky as possible so he can be very very effective um he did try to jump in to snake that uh that baron away from blue team by using his feast um but chad is really being on the ball making sure that he got uh, did he even 
I don't think he got that smite off. Oh, maybe it took that long for it to come back up. I'm going to have to rewatch this afterwards to see if he used a smite. Um, it'd be kind of funny if he didn't use a smite. So, a lot of damage being done onto that Janna. She's going to have to go back to base, make sure that she heals back up. The best part about being Lux is that your Lux laser is on such a low cooldown. Look at that, 24 seconds. You might as well just spam that thing. You might as well get last hits with that ultimate because it is just so fast to coming back. So they're doing exactly the right thing now. This is a uh, this is the way the pros do it, guys. So watch and learn, because with having both the mid inhibitor and the bottom inhibitor down, these lanes are pushing very, very hard. They realize that Cho'Gath has gone great initiate with those ultimates and doing a lot of damage. The Anivia does go down, so they do not have an AP carry. A lot of damage is being done by that Amumu ultimate. They've really made a zone that these guys cannot pass through. Thou shall not pass. And look at the damage coming down onto everybody. They managed to take down that turret as well while taking the damage from it. They're going to take out the third inhibitor. This is the trifecta of shit for the red team. And look at that. The super minions, especially the double super minions, are now onto that first nexus turret. So a lot of damage being done here. And a lot of damage being done on that Caitlyn. She does have her GA back up now. So she is going to be quite scary with that still up. But she's pretty much out of mana. So she is going to have to go back and heal. It's not really like they can uh, do a counter initiate team fight here. Look at that, look at that, the damage going down from that Lux ultimate. Might as well use it, right? If you got it, use it. If you got it, flaunt it. So look at that, Nexus turret going down. So look at that, already a 6k gold lead now. So really increasing their gold lead, making sure that they are uh, doing everything they can to get the biggest advantages that they can. So it's going to be very, it, it, this is right now blue team's game to lose, um, I will say that much, because they've played this so surgically, they've done it very, very well doing small, small, small gains, but making sure that they're getting these small games, <laughs> games, they're making sure they're getting the small gains constantly. Um, they have not let up. It's just been one thing after another, after another, after another, and making sure that they go back and buy and use the money that they've got. Uh, so that way every team fight that they come into, they're just a little bit ahead. And they're picking off the right targets, and they're really synergizing that Vladimir ultimate with everything else that they've got. If you don't have that Vlad ultimate down first, there's no point in using your ultimates. So making sure they're getting that 12% uh, increase in damage off, which is currently winning them the game. They just sniped that Anivia off so quickly and they, they sniped her and her egg and their team really couldn't do anything about it. So uh, now her egg is also going to be down for what's the what's the cooldown on that bad boy? Uh, I can't even tell what the, what the cooldown is. Uh, unless it says it on her passive screen. Four minute cooldown. So uh, they got four minutes of uh, playtime here where they know that Anivia can be sniped once. Um, and then not be a threat anymore, so. They're just going to keep the pressure on, which is very, very smart. If you let this enemy team continue to farm, you could find yourself in a in a bad situation. They're going to probably try to take down this inhibitor. And right now, they're not fighting against any turret, so it's just going to be a 5-on-5 five five with no turret. So the Lux Zonias and flashes through, make sure that she does not get picked off by this Nocturne. Actually taking Nocturne out of the fight with his ultimate doing absolutely nothing to the Lux. Doing a lot of damage to Cho'Gath is now down. Vladimir is at very low health. No one seems to be going for the Vladimir, but the Caitlyn ultimate ends up taking her up. But the Nocturne is down. Same with the Cho'Gath. Grave is just doing so much damage. Just running rampant. The Caitlyn GA is down. Managed to get the stun onto them, but Caitlyn is going to go down. It's just a Nivea Lav 2. is very good at clearing waves, but I don't think she's actually going to have enough to clear this out. The Nexus is now taking damage. And GG, well played, coming out. Way to go, Mittens and Kittens. Just playing that literally like a professional team, taking down advantage after advantage after advantage, really making sure that they focus the right targets and synergizing their AoE comp so well. Really well played, guys. Very glad I could cast this game for you. And I will see you guys hopefully in the next tournament cast that I do. Great to be back in the League of Legends. Thank you, everybody, for subscribing and watching my videos. And I will see you guys next time.